So if you guys have seen my recent videos in the past few months, you know that most stakes I play are 2550, maybe a bit bigger. Because of that, maybe there's some disconnect now between what most people play and what this channel portrays. Today, we're gonna try to fix that by going back to my original roots and playing some 510, maybe 51020. Right, so today I'll be playing in a private game, which of course is at an undisclosed location, but it's a good group of guys. I've played this game a few times and it's always a ton of action. Not entirely sure how well I'll adjust to these more normal stakes. I'm hoping I'll be totally fine though, since I don't really think about the money aspect too much while I play. Before we jump into the hands, I wanna remind you guys in case you missed my last video, that I'll be going to Austin, Texas next month, specifically Round Rock, which is the area that hosts the Lodge. They're having me back for their uh, relaunch of the live stream setup they have going on. I'm not entirely sure on the details. All I know is they asked me to come play on their stream once or twice. And I said, of course, why not? It's always a good time. Anyway, that's all I got for now. Let's head inside and play some cards. Right, everyone here we are with some 5 5 10 home game action buy and structure for this game is five thousand dollar max but it's a match the stack meaning it's quite big for a 5 10 anyway i sit with five thousand and in the first interesting hand action folds to me on the button and i've got an ace so i make it thirty dollars to go small blind folds and then the big blind re-raises to 125 now my kicker is a seven and it's not the same suit so my hand is pretty trash but I do think hands like these are good opportunities to occasionally get out of line pre-flop since we have removal to aces, ace king, ace queen, you know, the good stuff. And I'm going to do it this time. So I make it $280 to go. My opponent makes the call, which is probably the worst option. Would have been better if he went all in or just folded. Now we have to play a hand post-flop with ace seven offsuit. And I guess that's the whole problem with these cards. Anyway, heads up to a flop of king, queen, jack with two spades. There's a bunch of face cards out there. I'm going to pretend I have something. So he checks. I bet 200 and he calls. Turn card is the king of clubs. He checks again. And what do I know? I'm just going to keep betting in hopes of getting a fold. This time the price is $250. My opponent doesn't have a ton behind, so I'd like to save some maybe potential all-ins on the river. Or maybe just make it look like I'm going to go all-in on the river, even though I might probably give up. Doesn't matter, though. He folds this time and flashes the ace of hearts. So most likely we got to bluff through here. In the next hand, the straddle is on for $20. Someone opens to $55, and I'm looking down at pocket kings. Make it $200 to go, and only the player who made it $55 calls. Heads up to a flop of 10 5 3 with two diamonds. He checks. I bet $130, and he makes the call. Turn card's not the best, I guess. It's the nine of hearts. This time when he checks, I decide to play some pot control and check it back. Could make a case for continuing to bet, but... I've got removal to both flush draws, and we could be up against some sort of two pair or set hand. So off to the river we go, and it's the deuce of clubs, which shouldn't really change anything aside from 6-4 improving. This time he bets $700, which is the size of the pot, quite a big bet. All the draws missed except for 6-4, and he could be value betting a worse hand. So of course, after checking back the turn, this is a pretty straightforward call. Unfortunately, this time we're up against 10-9 of clubs, which is top two pair. My single pair is not good enough to beat that. Nice hand. Next, I open to $30 with ace jack offsuit. Player on my left calls, and then the button makes it 175. Action gets back to me, and being out of position with ace jack unsuited is not ideal, so I think the best course of action here is to raise again, or maybe even fold sometimes, but for whatever reason, I'm not feeling too, I guess, predatory among this group of players. It's a friendly game, so I decide to just call, why not? And the player on my left calls as well. So we go three ways to a flop of ace, king, five with two spades. Action checks around and we see the nine of spades on the turn. Bringing in a potential flush, I do have the jack of spades and what I think is most likely the best hand since the player who re-raised pre-flop probably would have continued betting if he had a flush draw. 
And the guy on my left, how often is he going to have a flush, really? So I decided to bet for value slash protection. $150 to go. Player on my left does call, and the button gets out of the way. So not entirely what I was anticipating, but that's fine. We go to our river, which is the Ace of Hearts. Interesting card, as we improve to three of a kind. But what are we going to get value from? It seems unlikely he would play a king this way. What I think is most likely is he's got some sort of weak hand, maybe some sort of spade that does not improve. So I decide to check in hope of inducing a bluff, but my opponent checks it back right away. And somehow we end up losing to five deuce of spades. That's right, a turn flush that ends up checking back on the river, perhaps in fear of the dreaded check raise. When you bet a small flush, sometimes that does happen. So I guess I don't blame him. Good hand, man. Next, I am in the straddle of $20. Small blind opens to 80, big blind calls, and once again, I have a hand that should probably re-raise, but for reasons I just mentioned, I decide to uh, keep it chill and just call. We go three ways to a flop of ace, eight, five, with two spades. Action checks around, and we see a nine of spades on the turn. Small blind checks again. This was the pre-flop raiser, but this time the big blind leads out for $150. Action's on me now, and I'm a bit confused. If he had an ace, I suspect he would have bet on the flop after the pre-flop raiser checks it over to him. And I guess the same could be said if he flopped a set or two pair. So what I think is most likely is he's got some sort of draw. Maybe he turned a draw with the nine of spades. There's two flush draws and straight draws available as well. So I decide to float with king jack high, thinking it could be the best hand, at least sometimes knowing damn right that most likely I should have just folded, but it's not what I do. I put in the money, small blind gets out of the way. So we're going heads up to a river, which is the six of spades. Bad to worse, as now a bunch of those draws end up improving. I'm expecting him to bet, but instead he checks now. This was interesting to me. At the time, I figured he most likely had a draw on the turn, so why would he not continue betting on the river since most draws improve? And then I realized what that probably means is that he rivered a pair, or maybe just has a hand he's not too comfortable with. It doesn't look like I'm going to bet. So if he had a strong hand, I suspect he would have bet himself. Nope, that's not what happens. Instead, he checks to me. And now we've got king high on a board that we're most likely not going to win on. So I decide, hey, there's a potential flush out there. Any seven makes us straight. Why don't I try to represent some of those hands and get him to fold whatever single pair holdings he might have? That's what I do. I jam all in for $540. My opponent is not happy with it. And if I'm being honest, I'm not happy with it either. This is not exactly a well-played hand. I mean, I guess the way I played it is okay, but the cards I'm doing it with is quite bad. But anyway, it doesn't seem to make too much difference as my opponent thinks about it for quite a long time and ends up calling. Uh-huh, I bet you didn't see that coming. Yep, he calls and we lose to Ace King of Diamonds. Didn't expect that, especially after he just called the raise pre-flop. Once again, nice hand, sir. We lose a big one. Later on, someone opens to $30. There's a caller in between, and I'm on the button with pocket eights. Yet again, could make the case for re-raising, but I just call. Small blind calls, big blind calls as well, and that means five of us are going to this flop of jack, seven, six, rainbow. Not too bad for pocket eights, but being five ways, not feeling too good about it. However, the action checks all the way to me, and I rate to have the best hand at least sometimes, so I decide to bet $40 for some protection. Most turn cards are going to be a disaster. Only the small blind calls, and right away I hate my bet, since it seems like most likely we're only getting called by anyone who has a jack, but you guys can probably already tell I'm not playing my best in this particular game. Anyway, we go heads up to the turn, which is the five of diamonds. He checks again, and now if you guys look at the board... 9-8 would be the nuts. I've got pocket eights. That means I've got removal to 9-8, and I could represent that hand, I think. Isn't that how that works? I'm not sure. All I know is I'm going to pretend I have a straight now since I put my opponent on a jack after he calls on the flop, mainly because he called with three other players left to act, so it seems like he's got top pair. Anyway, I bet $300. He is not phased. He makes the call yet again, and we're off to a river, which is the 10 of spades. He checks again, and he's got around $2,000 behind, and I decide it's time to apply maximum pressure. If I had the nuts, I would certainly do this as well. So that's what I do with my pocket eights. I announce all in for $2,000. It doesn't take too long for my opponent to let it go. So I think we got one through. Can't really be sure. Maybe he just had a seven or something. I don't really know, but we win this pot. And with that, we move to the next one where early position opens to 30 and I'm in late position with ace queen of clubs. I make it a hundred dollars to go. And now the big blind shoves all in for 260. 
Initial razor folds, I am going nowhere for only $160 more, so I make the call. Turn over my cards, and what do you know, we're up against the same hand. Ace, queen, except it's the diamond variety. My opponent asks how many times I want to run it. I say one time is fine. We've got the same hand. It's most likely going to be a chop until we flop a flush draw and end up rivering the nuts. That's right. It's not a big pot or anything, but it's always a good feeling when you get it all in versus the same hand and end up winning somehow. I'll take it. Next, I put on the $40 double straddle, or maybe it would be the triple straddle. I'm not too sure. Either way, there's an early position limp. Everyone else folds, and I have a queen seven suited. Decide to check it. We go heads up out of position to a flop of jack four deuce with two hearts. I check. He checks it back. Turn card is a seven of hearts. I feel like after he checks back the flop, we most likely have the best hand now, so I decide to bet small for some protection. $20. My opponent makes the call, and we see the nine of spades on the river. Not really sure if we have any value now, so I check. My opponent does not check. Instead, he bets $100. Not really sure what to make of this. If he had a jack or any sort of good hand, he probably would have bet on the flop. And if he had a good hand on the turn, like a flush, for example, he might have raised. So I don't really know what this means. And as you guys know, when I'm curious and I'm getting a good price, I tend to call. This time is no different. I toss in the money. And what do you know? We lose to 10 8 of diamonds. I guess that hand does make sense. A rivered straight. Very nice hand, sir. As you guys can tell, I'm not doing super hot, and at this point, someone else at the table's got a fairly big stack, so since this is a match the stack game, I add on an additional $5,000 in for $10,000 now, but I'm stuck around two or three k, I think. No worries, the game goes on, and this one, the button opens to $30, and I'm in the small blind with Queen Jack offsuit. I'll be the first to say, most likely folding is probably the best play, but this raise did come from the button, which means he could have quite a few hands. And for that reason, I think re-raising from the blinds with unsuited picture cards is okay. Once in a blue moon, this is going to be one of those times. I make it $150, and only the button makes the call. Heads up to a flop, which is an interesting one. King 10, 5 rainbow. We flopped an open-ended straight draw, and we could turn the nuts or river the nuts later on, and could also have all sorts of stuff on this particular board. So I decide to continue betting. I make it 100 bucks, and my opponent calls. Turn card is the four of diamonds, shouldn't really change anything. I do have the queen of diamonds, so perhaps I could represent a backdoor flush, but hopefully it does not come to that. I'm gonna continue betting. Like I said, I could have all sorts of stuff, including aces, ace king, king queen, pocket kings, pocket tens, king ten suited, ace five suited, although I guess that's a bluff. Anyway, you guys get the idea. I could have all sorts of stuff, so with queen high, I'm definitely gonna keep betting as well, as if I did have something good. I bet $1,000 this time. That's right, almost double the size of the pot. This opponent in particular is the other player at the table who's got quite a few chips behind, so I think going big is okay. I'm trying to set up an all-in on the river if we get a good card. Hopefully it doesn't come to that, like I said, but it looks like it will because after some thought, my opponent makes the call yet again. Not good, but what do you know? The river is the ace of spades. That's right, out of nowhere, we end up making the best possible hand and after my opponent calls such a big bet on the turn it seems that he's at least going to have a decent holding so the plan was always to go all in just because we river something doesn't change that he's got around thirty four hundred dollars behind around 150 percent the size of the pot and of course i am going all in so i announce all of it my opponent does not snap fold which is always a good sign in fact he does the opposite of snap anything as he actually takes around five minutes before finally deciding to call that's of course good news i turn it over and we are going to win a nearly ten thousand dollar pot in this measly 510 game not bad at all and we end up crawling out of the hole and into profit land with this hand All right, with that awesome hand out of the way, we move on to this one where the button limps and then the small blind makes it $150. I'm next to act and I've got pocket aces. Up against the same opponent, I just won a big pot versus. Of course, it's time to battle yet again now that I actually have some good cards. I make it $450 to go and only he makes the call. So we go heads up to a flop of king, king, nine, rainbow. Good board for me. He checks. I bet $300 and he makes the call. Turn card is the four of spades. He checks, and I think for the most part, I should continue betting, but sometimes checking over pairs on boards like these is a good idea, so that's what I do this time. Could induce some potential bluffs on the river or even some value bets from worse holdings. So off to a river we go, 
and it's a good one. The deuce of spades should change absolutely nothing, except this time my opponent leads out instead of checking. He bets $1,200. Of course, after I played my hand the way I did, this is the easiest call on planet Earth. He could easily be value betting a worse hand. He could also be bluffing, I guess, but... I've played with this player quite a bit, and he doesn't bluff a whole lot, especially with sizable river bets. So this is kind of a dicey situation, as ridiculous as it might sound. So it actually took me quite a long time to call. I don't know why, I just had a bad feeling about it. But of course, eventually I did call. And not trying to be results-oriented or anything, but we do end up losing to King Jack offsuit for flop trips. And I don't know. You guys get how it is. Sometimes you just have this weird gut feeling, but I couldn't listen to it this time and we end up losing quite a big pot. Seems fair, I guess, after I got lucky against him earlier with Queen Jack. And with that, we arrive at the last fun hand of the night. Once again, an example of me not playing my best at this game. I open Ace-8 suited on the button to 30. Small boy makes it 130 and I call. Already perhaps a bit sus, but okay. Up to a flop, which comes nine, six, three, two diamonds and one club. I've got absolutely nothing. He checks, and I should probably take a stab at this, but I check it back. Turn card is the five of diamonds. I still have pretty much nothing aside from a straight draw now. He bets $75 now, and this is where I really get off the rails and decide, hey, why don't I raise right now, make it look like I have something really good, and then jam all in on the river. And my train of thought is board good for me, board bad for him. Is that true? I don't know. Probably not. But anyway, that's what I do. I make it 175 and he tosses in the $100. River card is the 10 of spades. My opponents only got around 300 left behind, which is why I raised so small on the turn. But the plan was always to try to get a fold from a hand like ace king or ace queen with a diamond. You know, all these holdings that call on the turn but don't improve. So that's what I do. He checks. I jam all in and he pretty much calls before I can even get the chips out. Probably a bad sign, and sure enough, we were up against pocket queens with the queen of diamonds. So, yeah, I was in bad shape. It doesn't help that I played that hand quite poorly, but that's okay sometimes. You know, it's good for the soul. Anyway, that was the last fun one of the day. Like I always say, I hope you all enjoyed the hands. Alright, so that brings an end to the 5, 10, 20 session, and I gotta say, I had a good time. But unfortunately, the results don't necessarily reflect that. I ended up losing only $250 though, which I think is a slight accomplishment. I expected to lose a little more if I'm being honest. So the big pots didn't go too poorly. What I did not include though were like the 37 small hands I lost all night long i would re-raise pre-flop and someone would jam all in or i would c-bet on a flop and get called down you know that kind of stuff you, you all know how it goes so between that and losing a few medium-sized pots here and there yeah minus 250 dollars not gonna make or break the bank so uh that's okay i'll live with it anyway i hope you guys enjoyed the slightly smaller stakes today more of a relatable session i think that's all i got for you guys today see you all for the next one and like i said be on the lookout for those uh lodge videos coming up in february as always thanks for all the support until next time good luck at the tables peace